What's up, Horror Fam? You know what time it is. And today we're getting very superstitious. <laughs> Writing's on the wall. <laughs> Ah, just kidding. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some superstitions <laughs> and some strange traditions. Almost as strange as Ryan singing very superstitious. There's nothing strange about me singing very superstitious. <laughs> Except for the fact I have no pants on. Ah. <laughs> We've Happy done Easter. you guys a favor. We've kept our pants on for Easter. Yay! I even got my Easter shirt on. Happy Zombie Jesus Day. Zombies! Ooh! Ooh! Let's talk about that. Okay, let's do it. We don't tell you to talk about religion, but is Jesus a zombie? Mm, well, he did rise from the dead. Technically, he rose from the dead. And he, you know, technically he takes people's souls. But was it his body? Or was I don't. It just his Evidently, his body was gone. Mm. So... Who took Jesus' body? Somebody's out there. <laughs> Someone's we just had half our listeners turn this episode off. <laughs> And, you know, no. it's okay. It's okay. No, it's not. It's okay. Turn that back on. And we're back on. <laughs> no, um, as you guys heard, we're talking about uh, some superstitions and stuff and all that good jazz. And we kind of, we had something planned that fell apart. So we're just going to have a good time talking about some. Uh, we're going to have some fun. Random conversations we usually have, which is the reason why we started this whole thing. Um, and you they know. are random. Well, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> like is Jesus a zombie? Hey man, I think that's um, that's you know, Hey, it, it, that is a fitting topic for today because it is Easter Sunday for us. Right now, we're recording this on Easter. That's right, guys. That's why I'm wearing this beautiful shirt. Yeah, me too. The devil's rejects. Um. Yes. But uh, anyway, you know, uh, most people are at least a little superstitious. Uh, whether that be placing trust in lucky numbers or trying to avoid bad omens. You know, there's all kinds of different things that people do that, you know, you could call them quirks, oddities, uh, but truly they are superstitions. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's some tradition there, uh, but a lot of it is well to ward off evil. Yeah, you know, you know uh, that's kind of like for, you know, for me, I'm... I don't know, like 40-something percent Irish, 43, 45, somewhere in there percent Irish. Um, and he loves the movie Leprechaun. I love Don the Leprechaun. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Yeah. No, well, you know, like there's a ton of superstition uh -huh. in the Celtic world. And, yes. You know, yes, there are. Um, one of the things I, that I'm probably going to be in one of the next tattoos I get too uh, is the uh, horseshoe. Hmm. And see, a lot of people, they do the uh, horseshoe over the, over your door, over your door, you uh -huh. know. Um, and there's a proper way to place that too. Exactly. Oh, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Go, well, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you know, you see a lot of them, and um, they just have it either. Up, I don't know how. I guess would that be upside U shaped? Yeah. Yeah. Would they call that upside down? Would that be upside down? I guess or. Uh, for superstition purposes, that would be right side up. Right side up. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. But uh, what we're talking about is the legs pointing up. Yes, the legs pointing up. That's how we always like it. We like the... <laughs> yeah. oh. Heels to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, here's an odd thing about horseshoes. Oh, God. So horseshoes have seven holes on them. Yes. Why? Because that's the way that it was intended. Mm. <laughs> But it's four on one side and three on the other. You tell me. Why did they do that? You tell me. There's got to be some sort of... Reasoning? Re uh, reasoning uh, superstition behind it. Mm -hmm. The lucky number seven is what comes to mind. Oh, there you go. Um, and, you know, horseshoes are considered lucky. Yes. Um, and, like, uh, sometimes they have the horseshoes, they'll have three horseshoes. I have seen that. You know, which to me, and they're kind of weird like that. Those are people that are really fucked up and need all the help they can get. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it like this: luck three, lucky number seven, three sevens. You know. Oh yeah, the Trinity. Trinity. Yeah. Um, you know, ah, that's a good point. I yeah. never thought about that. I I've, have seen that book. I have seen it a lot, and I I should know this because like I've delved deep into it. You know, um, 
But like, speaking of superstitions and things like, as far as the horseshoe would go, mm-hmm. like in Celtic, you know, and all that kind of stuff, uh, it kind of brings you back to the mind, the thing we were talking about with um, mindset. How like if you think something will happen, it can happen. Yes. Um, so you know, if you continue to think negatively. Eventually, you're, you're going to have so much negativity that negative shit's going to happen because you're just causing that to happen. That's what's going on with my life. <laughs> my life's golden. I'm happy right now. <laughs> Me too. I'm just glad you made it. Yes. Uh, well, hey, I was doing a good thing and stopped. Looks and, like we made it. It <laughs> looks like we made it. Look. This is, this is the musical version of the horror film. <laughs> You Sorry, guys, guys have been asking for it. Now you're getting it. You're going to get the, the Horror Chronicles musical. <laughs> uh, buy your bonus disc and get behind the scene yeah. footage. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but um, yeah. With great I, songs like Ryan, put your pants back on. <laughs> um, <laughs> and is that a copyright strike? <laughs> <laughs> uh, or the oh. old classic, oh, another YouTube morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys have been put in Facebook jail. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, story of our life. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyways, back to superstitions. But what I was saying, you know, um, I uh, speaking of superstitions or uh, traditions, you would say in certain mm-hmm. places, a lot of it, like you said, has to do with warding off evil spirits or, you know, just maybe wishing for good luck or just putting your best foot forward really you know um but i really do think that and we talked about this a little bit before you know but i think that everything is a mindset so like if you if you're thinking that way it's gonna end up happening that way you know if you push out good vibes you know and um just go just look forward to things and put out good energy and quit thinking so negatively about it Quit being More a negative Nancy. Yes. Or Karen. Sorry, all you Nancys out there. Or Karens. Don't be a Karen. <laughs> What's the male version of a Karen? Is it uh, Dave? I feel like it's Dave. No. What would be that? Dave's not here. Or a Peter. I've got a Peter for you. <laughs> oh, Peter. Oh, oh, Peter. <laughs> oh, Peter. But yeah, you know, um, I, 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 it's pretty cool because that is our history. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter where you're from. It is. You know, you know, superstitions aren't just in the United States. They are around the world. I mean, well, that's what that's a rich time. And think about countries like, you know, Ireland and Scotland Mm -hmm. and England and things like that. You know, China, all of Asia, you know, they they've been around established and they they are chalked full of tradition, you know, and a lot of these come from traditions, you know, and that's why when we talked about doing this episode episode i was like you know we can get into superstitions but let's talk about some of those weird traditions that we do too you Mm -hmm. know and uh so we're gonna we're gonna pop off with one here that i know everybody has heard of and that's knocking on wood yeah um different countries call it different things but people in the u.s often use the phrase knock on wood to ward off bad luck Although the superstition is said to have originated in Europe. Mm. So in in Europe, during the medieval period, many churches claimed to have pieces of Jesus' cross. And church officials would say that knocking on the wood would bring good luck. That's crazy. That's 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 pretty pretty cool, though. and, and And it's good that it came up on this day. Yeah, 100%. There you go. You know? You know, um, the origin of of the custom may be Celtic or Germanic folklore, wherein is you know supernatural beings are thought to have lived in trees and can be invoked for protection. So, kind of coming from like on our uh, our uh, interview that we did with Ash Green, uh huh. You know, um, witchcraft or um, some call it Wicca. <laughs> Other things like that. We're not going to get into that debate. But uh, pagans who thought that trees were homes of fairies and spirits. uh, Dryads and many other mystical creatures. Yep. A lot of spirits. You know, and we still believe in that, too. I mean, you go out and you look at a tree and you think, man, you know, have you ever just seen a tree that 
looks alive evil <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh 100 percent. but you know just looks evil so what what these people would do is they might knock on or what they actually call it in europe is touch wood um to request good luck <laughs> uh you're a little high there you need to go lower um <laughs> Uh, but basically, it was really to distract the spirits uh, that had evil intentions and were preying on these people. Yeah, you know, uh, it's it's funny when you go back and you look at all this, and then you put it all together uh-huh. into what people do now, and you see where they're coming from. Yeah, you know, it's funny, as, as I was going through some of this, it really there was a lot of traditions and superstitions that I have myself, but I never really knew why. Oh, okay. I had okay. them, and some of them are in this list, like the knocking on wood. I never really knew why. Yeah, you, you did that. Yeah, you know. Um, but what what they claim is the uh, you know you you could make a wish to a tree. And then touched the bark. Uh, this uh, represented the first knock. The second knock was to say thank you. The knocking was also <laughs> supposed to prevent evil spirits from hearing your speech and as such stop them from interfering. Oh, so it's kind of like a uh, masking. Yeah, kind of. You know, like, a, ah, interesting. Uh, you know, there was an interesting. A movie called Don't Knock. Don't Jeez. Knock Twice. Don't Knock Twice. That's it. Don't Knock Twice. Yes. And I kind of, when whenever I was going through this, I was like, oh, wait. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. That's cool how they, it flows with it. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I yeah, mean. It, it's just strange. And so to think, if you never knew why you knock on wood, that's why. Yeah, so if you think about it, you know, like if you're when you say you knock on wood, this never happened. Um, that goes into okay, if you're talking about, you know, oh, I've never broken my leg, knock, knock on, on wood, wood, you know. Yep. Um, yep. And then so that's supposed to be you're keep making, the you're making a wish to the spirit or the fairy or yeah. whatever. And it also within the wood. And also, like you said, it keeps the evils from interfering with it, mm-hmm. so not causing. So yeah. So it's a so it's a twofold thing. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, pretty neat. Pretty neat. So this next one is kind of cool because I never heard heard of it. I've heard of other things, and we'll talk about that yeah, in a second. Yeah. But uh, so tucking your thumb in while in a cemetery, your thumbs. So this. Is in Japan, people are often advised to tuck their thumbs into their fists when they're walking through cemeteries. Now, the reason for this is, in Japanese, the word thumb directly translates to parent finger. So, the legend warns that tucking in your parent finger, which is your thumbs, will protect your parents from death. So, um, it's kind of like... Uh, don't step on the crack or you break your mom's back type thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that one was on my radar, but I didn't I didn't put it in here yeah. because, you know, it's it's just one of those silly Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um but, but yeah, I mean it, it's really you're you're protecting your parents. Yeah, you know, uh I've heard of like in the US, you know, um hold your breath when you're passed in a cemetery. Mm-hmm. Uh, Out of respect for the yep, dead because yep. they're not breathing, so uh-huh. you know, lifting your feet when you go over a bridge. Yeah. So what's that? What's that about? Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know, and I didn't look into it. I've I don't never, know why, I've, but I remember always doing that as a kid. I've heard know? that. I've always heard that. You know, uh, there was one with a railroad crossing too. That oh oh, I remember one that you my raise mom, your hands over when you're yeah. going over a railroad when you're going over. Uh, a railroad well, crossing, that's because right? you you feel like you're on a roller coaster. Son of a. Uh, um, my mom used to tell me never count the the cars on a railroad on a okay. on a train that it was bad luck. Huh. Don't know. Don't know why. Maybe because it's distracting you from driving Maybe. and you're Maybe. you know. See, Maybe. it's like the little story, yeah. the little yeah. little warnings. Um, little wives' tales. This one's pretty cool though because yeah. um, 
it talks about the translations and things like that. So you see like how something over here can mean something completely different in another country, you know? Um, but I was going to talk to you about this real quick. I'll see how you, what your feelings are on this. Um, somebody had posted up something about, uh, this guy had posted up something about he was riding his bike through the cemetery. And he's like, I love riding my bike through the cemetery. It's so peaceful. Mm-hmm. You know, he has a picture yeah. of himself riding through. And some of the people that were making comments like, that's so disrespectful. Leave them alone, blah, blah. You're making this. You, you know, and it's kind of just like, for me, I, the way I look at this, I'll, I'll get your opinion on it, but like the way I look at it is, it's like, man, they maybe they like having people there. Maybe they like having people that come through there and, you know, or just, uh, I don't know. It, it's not like they're destroying things. Yeah. He's just yeah. peacefully, and it is peaceful. Mm-hmm. Going to the cemetery, man, I don't mind going in the cemetery and, like, sitting and just listening to the breeze right. and, like, right. whatever it may be, you know. Yeah, you know, I've always felt that if you go to a cemetery, you're you're there to pay respect. Um, riding your bike through a cemetery, I don't see it as a problem unless you're deliberately riding your bike over the tops of graves. Yeah, see, uh, because, see, that's a big thing for me even still. When I go to a cemetery, you know, I, you know, when I go see my mom, I, I walk around all the where the bodies are. I, I never, or I try to never step on a body. Um, this particular guy was on like a paved, like he had paved yeah, roads. There's through nothing there. wrong with that. You know, nothing um, wrong with that at all? Because I'm gonna say, you know, there's benches on cemeteries. Cemeteries are beautiful places. Well, I was gonna say, no matter what. We're going to be taking some pictures in some cemeteries. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, it's. Oh, yeah. But I just. I, that, We're going to do those obligatory uh, metal band in a cemetery photo. Yeah. But, you know, um, I just. No, just I, I, I find it. I know everyone has their own way of looking at things. Um, but for me, I think it's more of along the lines of as long as you're not doing anything stupid. And that's yeah, what anything, yeah. though. Anything that's disrespectful. But as long as you're just, you know, enjoying the peace and quiet and maybe. <sighs> there's just something about a cemetery. It's calm. You know? So I, I, I don't see nothing wrong with it. I don't either. But while yeah. we're on the subject of cemeteries, I'm going to skip way ahead. Oh, yeah. Who, we're not, we got I, nothing to worry about here. I, I found one of the weirdest things while I was doing <clears> all this. And I'm going to let you uh, <laughs> let you read through this. <clears throat> Hopefully I can pronounce all the words. <laughs> <laughs> so the living have long offered libations to the dead. Hey, I said that right. You did. <laughs> at, once to, at once to appease people they thought might haunt them in the afterlife. Honor those they loved and provide sustenance for them beyond the grave. <laughs> the, the act of pouring liquid... You know, one for my homies. Most likely water or beer on graves was prevalent in the ancient world. It spread from Egypt to other parts of Africa and eventually Greece, where mourners typically doused a small amount of wine on the ground before sharing the rest among themselves. I have I seen this. Okay, before you get into this next part. Yeah, well, because I've seen this, you know, okay. you see the pouring out uh, one yeah. for my homies, yeah. but I've also have seen this in um, a lot of, I, I am huge, I like, I know you guys know I love horror movies, but I also love like war movies and action movies, mm-hmm. but I've seen a lot of this in movies um, like uh, King Arthur, there's a movie King Arthur, and it's a, it's an older one, um, it's got Clive Owen in it, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Keira Knightley, it's a f- great fucking, yeah. one of my yeah. favorite films, but they pour it out, they pour out, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and stuff like the that, wine. drink, drink, you know, um, so that's awesome. Um, I never thought about that till I just read that, you know. Right. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, people do it all the time, you know, as a as a form of respect. So now here's where it gets really interesting. The ancient Romans took this practice of pouring out libations to a whole new level. What they did was they believe that through their bones or ashes the dead consumed whatever food or drink the living offered so they built what they called libation tubes 
<laughs> into graves that directly connected living relatives to their ancestors below. The idea was that the liquid uh, didn't have to seep through the ground to get to their remains and could instead flow directly to them. Huh. So what they did is, is they built their, you could call it a tomb, sarcophagus, whatever you want to call it. So basically they would line it with tile and then they would put, uh, put a, a tube going through the top of it and then the top would be lined with tile and the body would be inside that. Mm -hmm. Like a coffin or a sarcophagus or a tomb, whatever. And then this tomb would extend up through the earth to above ground. And what they would do is, is they would take food and wine and different yeah. substances and actually put them down this tube and drop them into the coffin or sarcophagus or tomb or whatever. That's crazy. Of their deceased relatives. See? Or ancestors. And for me, it's like... Uh, I understand the, um, um, I guess you'd call it a superstition, more of a tradition of, you know, pouring some alcohol or pouring something out for your lost ones, you know. But, like, this one here, I don't necessarily know if, because, like, for me, and I hate saying this because I love zombies. <laughs> you know, I'm a zombie guy. But uh, Nobody wants a drunk zombie, though. Well, that imagine that. But uh my thing is is like I believe that you're once you once you go once you die and you leave this body, your your soul or your your aura, whatever you want to call it, your entity mm -hmm. is gone. Yeah. yeah. So and I don't mean gone from this world necessarily, I mean gone from that particular body. Yeah, the only thing left is a vessel. Yeah. Um now where that goes from there don't know i'm a dimensions guy we all know that um but that being said when it comes to uh the particular thing of pouring alcohol into the into the actual tomb for go straight yeah, to them yeah. i mean it whatever makes you feel better about mm -hmm. losing your loved one and whatever you feel is respectful as long as you're not hurting anyone else i don't see others you know yeah it, and it's kind of it to me when i read through that it was kind of bizarre but it's not any more bizarre than the death bell. Correct. You know, and if you guys don't know what that is, uh, basically in olden times, before they started embalming people, uh, the instance of being buried alive was quite high. Yeah. So what they would do is, is they would put a string that went through the earth down to the coffin and hung inside the coffin and then on the tombstone itself would be a bell and that way if you were ever buried alive you had some chance of being rescued because you could grab that string and pull it and it would ring the bell above ground see man that's great i haven't yet to have seen run to see a grave with one of those on it i haven't either which would be cool but i've heard a lot about them. yes um you know you've seen it in the nun and all that mm -hmm. um but my thing is is that i just heard a story about that this lady um her sister had passed away, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Well, she couldn't make it back in time to get there before the funeral um, was going to be, you know, going on. Yeah. So they waited um, a couple days or whatever, and they're like, "Well, we got to go ahead and get through with this, or whatever." Well, she got there right after the funeral, and um, they had just buried the the coffin. Well, she was like, no, I want it dug up. I want to see my sister before one last time, you know, so she made a big deal. They dug her up and the sister sat up and was like, you know, what's going on? Like as soon as they pulled her up out of the ground. So she would have got buried alive. Yeah. You well, know, what a horrible way to go. Which, but that's pretty cool. That's scarier. Uh, it makes it cemeteries more scary. Think about that, man. You walk through a cemetery. All of a sudden you hear bells ringing. You hear somebody screaming. Or just bells, like ding, 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 ding. Dude, that's fucking crazy, man. That's freaking crazy. Now, you probably wouldn't see that anywhere other than maybe in Europe. Um, you know, we're talking 16, 1700s. Well, they, and they also put those uh, cages over the... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, that was in uh, Victorian era. Uh and that kind of had a twofold kind of thing too, 
one, it protected their loved ones from grave robbers. Mm -hmm. And then two, it also prevented the instance of if they come back as a vampire. Gotcha. They cannot escape. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. See, man, that's why it would be so cool to go overseas to some of these places and look mm. and see the things oh, that yeah, they have there, man. Stuff. I mean, in Ireland, they I know they got, like, buildings that are, like, 5,000 years old still standing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's crazy. We can't, you know, over here, we can't make a building stand for 50 years. But. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. They got 5,000-year-old 5, buildings over there, man. But anyways, That's let's crazy. get back into some more of these crazy, so, interesting. Uh, I'll let you uh, let you pick here. We got uh, hmm, what's this one? I never heard this one. Ever. What's this? We'll see. Well, so the number four in China. Some people in China will avoid anything having to do with the number four. It's like the movie I Am Number Four. I love that movie. That is a good movie. That's a good movie. Um, why the number four? I bet it wasn't big in China though. <laughs> Big trouble in little China. Sorry, I just mm. watched that. One of my favorite Kurt fucking Russell. one of my fifth saw on the reflexes. Yeah. God dang it, I love that fucking movie so yeah. much. Anyways, uh why the number four? The pronunciation of four in Chinese is similar to the word for death. Unsurprisingly, this makes many people believe that the number four is a sign of bad luck. So they, and this is what I was telling. This is what I was saying earlier about how the way we say things is different than the way they say things over in different countries. So you know, like it, it, ma it makes sense that uh, if you see something a certain way, and then not, then I do, and you're like, dude, that doesn't mean that. I'm like, well, that's what it means here. It, it's you know what's crazy to me is that. Uh, I'm trying to think of if there's something that's universal that all countries, everyone sees as. Because if you think about it, even people look at Satan differently mm -hmm. or Lucifer. If you're into the religious thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it, that's yeah, interesting. There's, uh, you're talking like a universal superstition. Yeah, or like a universal anything that people see as, oh, you know. Like, I can't think of anything that... I can't, I can't either, you know? off the top of my head. Um, there are some that, you know, travel from country to country, yeah. you know, just like the yeah. knocking on wood. Uh, you know, we do that here. That started over in, uh, you know, Europe and Egypt and, you know, all those places. Uh, you know, <clears throat> and then we have silly ones, like finding a penny on the ground. Yep. We all know, find a penny, pick it up, then all day you'll have good luck. Well... In all actuality, if you find a penny on the ground, especially if it's heads facing up, it's considered a sign of good luck in the U.S. People also uh, use the same find a penny, pick it up, and all day you'll have good luck. Yeah. Okay, uh, But it's apparently even luckier to find a penny stamped with the year of your birth or anniversary. I have never done that, but another weird aspect about this that uh, I never knew is if you find a penny and it's tails up, what do you do? You leave it the fuck alone. No. <laughs> You're supposed to flip it over and leave it for someone else, else to find. Oh. See, my mom has another, my mom does another weird thing and she still does it to this day. She's almost 60 years old. Uh, she, if she finds a penny heads up, she puts it in her sock. Okay. She puts it in her sock that she's wearing. Well, because, you know, there's a lot of thievery around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to ask her Some about that. I just don't know how to look in a sock. I'm going to I'm gonna have to ask her about that. Why? Uh, I put other things in my sock. Me too. It's a cum sock. Crusties. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And here's where those, uh, that's where those yeah, classic yeah, hits yeah, like, yeah. banned from YouTube, come yeah. on to play. Let's see uh, what we got here. Oh, of course, everyone. I wonder, you know what? No, that's not custom everywhere. You don't want to do that? Um, well, I mean, um, people know about that when I think. Throwing the bouquet yeah. at weddings, you yeah. know, everybody I mean, kind of. It's pretty much, pretty much tradition. You know, you do it. Mm, so uh, this one is interesting. I want to know. I didn't really delve into that one. The wearing uh, black at funerals. The tradition of wearing black 
in mourning dates back to the Roman Empire when they would dress in dark wool togas. The custom was later adapted by Queen Victoria, who wore black when she was in mourning whew, for her beloved Prince Albert. <laughs> yes, it oh, is. Uh, in Western culture, it is, tr- it is still traditional to wear black for funerals. But elsewhere, mourners can be seen in lighter dress. In China, for example, it's traditional to wear white. You know, something I do know about history is that there's reasons why you didn't have all these different colors back then. There just wasn't the fucking source for them. You know, a lot of people wore... That's why it was such a big deal if you wore a fucking red dress or a, you know, yellow dress. Yeah, because there was a lot of time and effort. And, you know, money. It was expensive right. to have that stunt kind of things. That's why a lot of poor people wore black and, and white, you know. Um, so that makes sense to me. Um, as far as black, though, I love black. I usually wear black all the fucking time. Yeah, I mean, just happens to be Easter, and I'm wearing my Easter shirt, so... Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> if you're, if, yeah, if you're looking, then you can appreciate it. Uh, but you know, um, I liked it. I just have one pop into my head, but I didn't put it on the list. But What's that? Anyway, go ahead. Uh, What's that? Well, I'm gonna stick with this. That's wearing black at funerals. So we have some really good friends of ours that are Greek, and they have a tradition that whenever a loved one dies, like a spouse. Uh, it is customary for the, I'm going to mess this up, but the widow to wear black for a month, I think it is, after the passing of the loved one. Mm. They can't wear anything but black. I could do that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but you you popped off with Easter and it made me think of bunnies and uh, what the hell's up with a lucky rabbit's foot? You know what? I've heard. It was, I did know that, but it, now it wasn't so lucky for the rabbit. Yeah, I, you I know mean, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look I, at I it. I don't know. I, di- I didn't look it up because I didn't even think about it until just now. But yeah, because I, I, you know, mm. I kind of, um, I've heard that before. While, we're, while Ryan's looking at this, I'm gonna talk to you about opening an umbrella indoors. We all know it's bad luck. Come on, just don't do it. This one I was wondering about, too. Uh, According to this superstition, though, if you open an umbrella indoors, it does terrible things for your luck. One theory dates back to ancient Egypt when nobility would use parasols uh, made of peacock feathers and papyrus to protect themselves from the sun. Opening them indoors away from the sun's rays would be seen as an insult to the sun deity Ra. And you'd be uh, cursed forevermore. Huh. Interesting. The second origin is from the Victorian era uh, when umbrellas were uh, constructed with steel spokes and opening one indoors could cause injury to, or eye loss. True. So what it's seen as an insult to Ra. Yeah. Do you call my name? Yeah. Do you steam my brain? Oh, sorry. I love that song. My eyes are blurry. You ever heard that? Mm-hmm. God, I love that. Sorry, guys. I got a little distracted. Right. When it comes to music, you guys know how we yeah. are. Yeah. Let's see here. Wikipedia. In some cultures, the foot of the rabbit is carried as an amulet believed to bring good luck. The belief is held by individuals in a great number of places around the world. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say. Oh, Wikipedia. This episode is brought to you by Wikipedia. Wikipedia, yeah. The world, including Europe, China, Africa, and North in South America and variations of the superstition the donor rabbit must possess must possess certain attributes such as having been killed in a particular place using a particular method or by per, a person possessing particular attributes it is suggested by Benjamin Radford that the rabbit's foot could be we need a fart mic I'm just going to say it we need one that was a good one Although it smells like burnt rubber and Vaseline. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so it has been suggested. <sighs> Jesus. Somebody strike a match. You guys are pretty lucky that this isn't a freaking virtual reality. You We're smell it. Release this on smell-o-vision. Oof. 
Um, so it's been suggested by Benjamin Radford that the rabbit's foot could be connected to the European good luck charm called the Hand of Glory, a hand cut from a um, hanged man and then pickled. Who? Huh. So technically, I guess um, the rabbit's foot, either the rabbit had been like super fast or whatever had to have attributes or um, had to be killed by a certain person in a certain way with a certain method. So, huh. I mean, there's not much to interesting. that. Interesting. Hmm. Not as interesting the as the foot. smell that just came out of your ass. Yeah, it was, that is, it was or, pretty horrendous. That is fucking horrendous. Pretty horrendous. It smells like a fucking dead rabbit's All foot right. in here. So talk about this because we need to light some of these. Oh, yeah, it ain't no joke. So candles on a birthday cake. Blowing out candles on your birthday cake is a long-standing tradition that can be traced back to the ancient Greeks. They would bake round honey cakes as offerings for their gods and goddesses and top them with candles to make them glow like the moon in tribute to the moon goddess Artemis. Artemis. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. That's pretty cool. I never knew so that. Now, every time I go to a kid's birthday party... And they blow the candles out. It makes me think about how much spit did they just get on the <laughs> Yeah. Can I have my piece before you blow the candle out? Yeah, I'm just going to take a little piece off. Just off the edge here, guys. <laughs> just off the edge. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I like birthday cake, too. I haven't had any birthday cake in a long time. Because it's not my fucking birthday. Yeah, you fuck. So, I'm going to talk about this one here. Uh, everybody's heard of this. Walking under a ladder. I, you know, we're told from a young age, just don't do it. Um, it's bad luck. Uh, I, you know, I have certain things, and walking under a ladder is one of them I just will not do. Uh, I work for a car company that, you know, we have a pretty big shop, and there's always cars up on lifts and stuff. I don't walk underneath those either. Um, I do. You know, if, if I can avoid it. I mean, there are times I have to, but um, now that I don't work on them anymore, I don't have to be underneath them. So, I, you know, and, you know, I just, the car thing is just, I don't know, it's a weird thing for me. But ladders is a weird thing for everybody. Well, not everybody. Some people just don't give a shit. Um, but I will not walk underneath a ladder. So here's what we found out about that. In medieval times, people believed a ladder against the wall resembled the gallows. Gonna get your ass hung, son. Uh, so if someone My walked ass underneath hung. one, it was thought that they would meet the same dreadful fate. Another theory was that when leaned against the wall, the ladder formed a triangle and signified the Holy Trinity. Walking underneath one would therefore break the trinity and be considered blasphemy. Hmm. So that kind of reminds me of, uh, what's that movie? The, um, was it The Ring? They had a picture of a ladder on the wall. Remember whenever they showed like the random pictures in a video and there was a picture leaned up, a uh, ladder leaned up against the wall and then a the lady even walked under one in the movie. I think that was oh, the ring, wasn't it? It may have been. Or was it Sinister? <clears throat> no, not Sinister. No. Okay. I think it was the ring. But anyways, okay. that makes sense I'll now. I'll go with you on that. That makes sense now. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I don't do it. I, you know, I avoid it. I, you know, I have all, there's some superstitions that I don't, I just don't care about. And then there's others that I'm like. I'm not very super. I guess, you know, the one thing I'm superstitious about is uh, karma. Karma. She's a bitch. I am a firm believer in karma, man. I think the way you treat people will definitely come back on you. I think yeah. that... Uh, now, that being said, I also think that you get what you fucking... I treat everyone accordingly. I don't treat everybody the same. I treat everybody accordingly. So, <laughs> I, I respect you till you don't respect me. And then, you know, if it need be, I can get really fucking disrespectful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, people that listen to this show know that. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just how it is. But anybody who knows me knows that I'm a fucking nice person until it's time. Like, uh, you're like Dalton. Like Dalton the, says, the it's, I'm nice till it's time to not be nice. 
<laughs> oh my god. That reminds me of that fucking it. that yeah, reminds me. It was gonna be Dalton. That reminds me of the fucking uh, Ron Jeremy joke. Or not Ron Jeremy. <laughs> That was a joke in itself. <laughs> Fucking Ron White joke. You know what I mean? He was talking about, he's like, uh, talking about how he got kicked outside of that bar. Out of that bar. Yeah. And he's like, and I'm talking big bouncers, like, you know, the kind that go home at night and watch Roadhouse and jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love Ron White. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, I, um, I really like the line of, I don't know how many it was going to take to kick my ass, but I know how many they were going to use. Yeah. <laughs> I do love him, man. But uh, anyways, uh, but what uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, I'm just a firm believer in karma is, is a thing. I guess I'm super. Everything else, I don't give a shit about. I could give a shit less. You know, I think that um, I, I'm respectful to the dead. I'm respectful to you know whatever whatever there needs to be. It's just so. Uh, I don't know. Black cats crossing the road. Uh, oh, good. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one because it's. Uh, when we'll get that one next, but it's because that black cat crossed is in my mind. So black cat crossing the road during the Middle Ages, it was believed that witches would shape shift into black cats to prowl the streets. This belief was echoed in the 17th century America during the time of the Salem witch witch trials. Is there any more to that? Uh, to the black cat. Yeah. There. There was, but I didn't really get not into, much into it. I I didn't really get into a lot of it. Uh, well, because my thing is like I don't. I'm not. I'm not on well, the. It, that has never been a big superstition of mine. Mine either. Because my wife and I are cat lovers. We have six black cats in the house. Yeah, I. And I so you know. You know, I think everything. Okay, put it. Like, here's here's a good example. Okay, so let's say you're driving. And you're superstitious. You see a freaking um, black cat cross your path. What are you gonna do if you're super sti- very superstitious? You're driving down the road. And you see a black cat. You're gonna turn around. And... Or you're gonna hit your brakes, which is what's gonna right. happen. Well, if someone's following you, bam! They're someone plows you. into you. So, oh, oh, the black cat did it. It crossed my path. No, you're stupid ass. Hit the fucking brakes, and someone hit you. Yeah. See, that's the way I, I think that it's all you know, just part of a. We'll see what it say. Yeah, see, but you know, the you talk about in the Middle Ages, you know, uh, the belief, uh-huh. you the know, uh, of the witches. But in Britain and Ireland, it is lucky to see a black cat, as it is in Germany, as long as it crosses your path from left to right. <laughs> yeah, I just don't even care. <laughs> Oh, and if a cat walks towards someone, it is said to bring good fortune, hmm. but bad luck if the cat walks away, as it takes the luck with them. Mm. Well. Oh, and the Scots have a superstition that if a strange black cat arrives at a home, the signifies uh, prosperity. There you go. So, see? In a lot of places, uh, you know, a lot of countries, it's not a bad omen to see a black cat. And that's my thing. It's, all, it's always different, you know. So. But <clears throat> here, we'll get into this one, too. The broken mirrors, seven years, bad luck. Mm-hmm. So, you want to get into this one, or you want me to do Yeah, uh, go ahead. So, the Romans believe mirrors to be magic portals into the soul. Thus, breaking one would damage the soul and could be um, right at and could not be righted until the next seven-year cycle had passed. This was the amount of time they believed it took for life to renew itself. We were talking about a seven-year cycle and something else. Mm. Oh, my God. What was that? I don't know. Was that in our witchcraft episode or something? It's possible. Where there were... There was like a seven-year cycle where everything renewed after seven That's years. That's the renewal of life. They, they, they believe that, you know, life could renew itself in seven years. So, I mean, that, you know, um, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? On the, um, as far as the mirror situation? So, so mirrors, you know, a lot of the ancient cultures believe that mirrors were these you know, beautiful things that were like portals to 
or gateways to to your inner spirit or whatever, you know. So <clears throat> to break one would be breaking your inner spirit, especially if you're looking into it. At the time. At the time of the breaking. fracture or whatever. So the other strange thing about mirrors, and I was just trying to find this because I, I forgot to look it up, but... Uh, there's a there's a thing about covering mirrors after someone dies. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to cover mirrors, and if I remember right, that is to keep their spirit from coming back and haunting you. From coming back, yeah. See, which is another, actually that's another great movie, is Mirrors. Yeah, that's a fucking great. It got one of my favorite scenes. Um, even though she's pretty, but the girl that when his when his sister, Kiefer Sutherland's sister's in the bath. And her, uh, her, the evil is in the in the mirror. She's laying there and just like takes her jaw and it's like rips it apart. Oh, dude, yeah, dude, that is brutal. man. That's such a good freaking scene, dude. That's a really good movie. Really good movie. So what are we looking up here? So we're gonna move on. So this was gonna be kind of a long one, and I thought you'd get a kick out of this. <laughs> oh, uh, so. We're going to talk about, this isn't really a superstition, it's more of a tradition for us, but it's got some superstitious background. Oh, yeah. So, we're going to talk about the Tooth Fairy. You know, all kids know about the Tooth Fairy and parents, you know, you know when your child loses a baby tooth, they're supposed to take it and put it underneath their pillow, and they'll get money for it. Have you done that with your boys yet? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you've carried on the tradition. All right. So the folklore states that when children lose one of their baby teeth, they should place it underneath their pillow or on their bedside table, and the tooth fairy will visit while they sleep, replacing the lost tooth with a small payment. Yeah, my wife missed the small payment part. <laughs> now my kid's getting like fucking five bucks a tooth. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, it was funny. I did see the... Uh, the uh, going rate for a tooth is like $3.70. Jesus. <laughs> so, inflation. I used to get a quarter. Um, <laughs> but that was like, you know, 150 years ago. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> in Northern Europe, there was a tradition called Tand Fei, or Tooth Fee, uh, which was paid when a child lost their first tooth. The tradition is recorded in writings as early as... The Edis, which was circa 1200, you know, uh, which are the earliest written record of Norse and Northern Europe traditions. Wow. In the Norse culture, children's teeth and other articles belonging to children were said to bring good luck in battle. And Scandinavian warriors hung children's teeth on a string around their necks. So... Huh. So, yeah. During the Middle Ages, other superstitions arose around, uh, surrounding children's teeth. In England, for example, children were instructed to burn their baby teeth in order to save the child from hardship in the afterlife. Children who did not consign their baby teeth uh, to the fire would spend eternity searching for them in the afterlife. The hmm. Vikings, it is said, paid children for their teeth. Fear of witches was another reason to bury or burn teeth. In medieval Europe, it was thought that if a witch were to get a hold of one's teeth, it could lead to them having total power over them. Huh. <clears throat> that's another good movie, Darkness Falls. Darkness Falls, and that's what I was thinking of whenever I pulled this out. Um, you know, there's something to be said about... Uh, like uh, children, you know, uh, to me, we've all know this, uh, the, the greatest thing ever, y you know, they're, they're the gift of life basically, you know? Um, now I've heard other things about Vikings and things like that. that we don't know really because we weren't there, but like I've heard different things about children and you know, that Vikings just slaughtered everyone. Why would they pay someone for teeth when they could just kill them and take their teeth? Right. Um, Vikings weren't known to pay people for anything. Right. You know, they're made to foot. They're pretty but much. But 
you know, what people in their clan, though, when yes. the kids would lose yes. their teeth. That I can know, see. They would possibly pay um, other clan members for their children's teeth. It just goes to show you that, you know, I, I, I think it's more of the, the life Mm-hmm. force that a kid has that a child yeah. has you know yeah. like my four-year-old dude he's fucking just a ball of fucking life man yeah. i mean he's constantly just saying things and doing things and learning and it's just boom 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 and like you know but uh they said like this would bring power like protection to them yeah it would bring them luck in battle you know um yeah i mean uh and then as far as the witches go that's a that superstition you, you know is is seen not just with teeth with everything mm-hmm. that's how they can cast spells on you yep. supposedly maybe we need to get ash on here and talk to her about talk it to her about teeth. the yeah what they what they think about that kind of thing is that's something we should ask them about um damn it well, we could have a whole tooth fairy episode with- well no i want to get her back on so we can talk to her about like okay What's the whole thing with the hair or the piece of this the or that? Yes, all that. We. Need, yeah. I want to. I want to talk to her. It's all portions of <clears throat> people's. You. Yeah. But interesting though, while I was uh, doing research on this tooth fairy thing, uh, my wife got me into watching the show. It's a new show on Netflix called The Irregulars. Um, and basically, what it is is if you've read any of the Sherlock Holmes books, Sherlock Holmes had a a group that did like investigative work for him called the irregulars Mm -hmm. and basically they were poor children that you know he would pay them a little bit of money to help him find people and stuff but anyway that's what the show's about well one of the one of the creatures uh, well i say creatures it was a woman but uh she was she had powers um they had her tied to a chair and they were talking to her and they showed a close-up of her face and her teeth were all mangled and fucked up and shit, but she had a necklace on, and the necklace was all teeth. Oh. And it was, I was like, oh, my God, honey. I, I made her pause it, and then I told her this whole story about that. <laughs> and she's, she's just looking at me going, what the, what the hell? <laughs> Why do you know this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly it. Why do you know this? And I'm like, well, I've kind of been looking at weird stuff here lately. So. <laughs> that's what we do. Anyway, we're going to motor along here. I know you're going to want to get into this one, so this will uh, probably be our... I, I definitely want to get into this. Uh, there's, uh, We've got a couple other things here we want to talk about. Um, <laughs> yeah, try and say that word there, dude. <laughs> Parascavidectrophobia. Very good. Very good. So what that is, is that is a fear of... Friday the 13th. Now, never, don't ask me to spell that without looking at it. So, people have been afraid of the number 13 for centuries. Um, They actually call that trestodectophobia, um, and that's the fear of the number 13. But the word that Ryan just said that I don't know that I'm going to try and try and say uh, is actually the fear of the day, Friday the 13th. Um, So, According to folklore historian Donald Dossey, the unlucky nature of the number 13 originated with the Norse myth about 12 gods having a dinner party in Valhalla. Valhalla! Valhalla! The trickster god, Loki, who was not invited and arrived as the 13th guest and angered uh, Hora, I think is how you say that, to uh, shoot, oh, oh, and arranged for Hora to shoot Balder with a mistletoe-tipped arrow. And we didn't even get into mistletoe. I was going to get into that, but it's too Christmassy. <laughs> um, so, interesting. Loki shows up as the 13th guest. Kind of cool. The superstition may have also arisen in the Middle Ages, Originating from the story of Jesus' Last Supper and Crucifixion. Hey, happy Easter, everybody. Uh, In which there were 13 individuals present in the upper room on the 13th of Nisan Monday, Thursday, the night before his death on Good Friday. Hmm. So, I'm going to tell you a little story and then we're going to spill into this other one here. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, Friday the 13th, we all love the movies. I love that holiday. Every time it comes around, to me, uh, for most people, it's just a day. To me, it's a holiday, and I love it. We get about one Friday the 13th a year. Some years, we can get up to three. I was say, last year we uh, got three. Last right? year we got three. Um, to me, Go figure. It's just, it, it's just one of those things. You know, I grew up on 80s horror, and I'm a huge Friday the 13th fan. And I just, I love Friday. And so Friday the 13th is a cool thing for me. But talking about Jesus' Last Supper and the crucifixion, if you look at Da Vinci's painting of the Last Supper, you will see... Judas sitting there, and in front of Judas is a salt shaker that has been tipped over and spilled. And what they claim is that the salt is a bad omen. Let me get into this next one here, and it'll all be clear to you. Mm. So this next thing we're going to talk about is throwing salt over your shoulder. (laughs) <laughs> Not the whole shaker. <laughs> According to superstition, spilling salt is bad luck, and throwing a pinch over your shoulder reverses that bad luck. Typically, it's thrown over the left shoulder. We don't know exactly when this tradition began, but there are a few explanations about why spilled salt is bad luck. Take a close look at Da Vinci's painting, The Last Supper, and you'll see that Judas Iscarot has knocked over the salt with his elbow. Because Judas betrayed Jesus Christ in the Bible, people began associating salt with lies and disloyalty. Throwing salt over the left shoulder blinds the devil who uh, uh, who was waiting there to force you into acts of bad behavior as well. Ooh, interesting. So why toss it over the left side? Some Christian beliefs hold that the devil hangs around behind your left shoulder, waiting to take advantage of you. If you spill salt, the devil sees it as an invitation to step in and do evil. Throwing it over your shoulder into his face blinds him and renders him helpless. I wonder if that's why they say salt can stop like spirits. I think that's a good possibility. Cool. I think that's a good possibility. It also uh, does a hell of a job on a slug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. you know. But, but yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Like a little, uh, and I, th- that w- I thought that was cool how those two tied together. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. So, so, so yeah, guys, I don't hope there's you... There's a lot of cooks out there that toss salt over their mm-hmm. shoulder for luck. Yeah. And stuff. Um, but, yeah. That's pretty awesome, man. That's pretty cool. Cool cool little story, guys. So, there are some superstitions superstitions for you. And traditions. You know. uh, And I got one more that I want to show you. We're not going to do that one. Yes, we are. You're going to do it. No, I'm not going to read about the whole freaking penis festival in Japan. (laughs) (laughs) Better known as the Kanamara Matsuri. Devotees carry a large sculpture in the shape of of a penis and parade through the streets of Kawasaki in Japan. It is said that a, a, a demonish or demoness with vaginal teeth seduced men to their deaths until temptus priest, temple priest used a metal dick to destroy her deadly secret weapon. Hell yeah. <laughs> I ran into that. And, I, and look, we even got a picture. <laughs> That's a picture of me. What are you doing? <laughs> Uh, it, it popped up, and I was like, "Ah, oh, we gotta, we gotta talk." That's about that. hilarious! What a hell of a way to end the show. <laughs> we're beating a, we're beating a temple priest with a metal dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. But anyway, well, there you go, guys. So that last one's a doozy. What did you guys think? A uh, little superstition, a little. I'll tell you what, tradition. Why don't you guys leave us some comments below and let us know yeah. what you guys think? What's some of your uh, superstitions you believe in and stuff like that, and why? Some of your favorite traditions. So yeah, guys, that's it for today. We appreciate you. We love you. Um, as always, you know we love you guys, and you guys' support is awesome. Um, our Facebook page keeps going and going. So 
you guys are awesome on there. And um, we want to give a shout out to all the other podcasters out there who are helping out and just spreading the love. You know, Phantom Galaxy, Land Thanks of the Crees, freaking uh, it'll be horror stories, all those kind of places like that. We love you guys. But more importantly, as always, until next time, keep it creepy.